Welcome to the December edition of Irish Rugby TV's magazine show Inside Pass. In this episode, we look back on a historic year for Irish rugby, take a closer look at developments taking place in Ireland's sevens programme, and catch up on all the latest news from within Irish rugby. 2016 was a challenging year for the Ireland team, and one where history was made in Cape Town, Chicago, and at the Aviva Stadium. Cleaning out is good at rack time as well. The little dab through. And the try is scored, Jared Payne. Successful with a conversion early on. And again, he raises the flags. Strauss well cleaned out. Now Jackson back in the pocket with a drop goal. He's watching it slightly anxiously, but no need. Because no. of advance, the call of user has come, so South Africa can take heart from some of that defence. Here's Payne into the line. Beautiful burst of acceleration, and Trimble was looking for Jackson to his inside. Best. Right. Murray. Little show of the ball and hunted down by its mid. Not held, it's brilliant. So I win all other toys, thanks. Jackson adds the extra two. To play at Newlands, South Africa will be 10 points behind. And Jackson absolutely loves it, and why not? Have brought a silence to Newlands again as Jackson lines it up to put them six in front. He went straight down for the kicking tee and he loved it. Nothing on for him, and Yakani with support from Strauss. Yankees for Mbobo, then Delendi, LaRue, and JP Peterson! Come down to this decision, I think, from the body language that the players all know. Watch Peterson's boots. That touches uh, the corner flag, but then he's bundled into touch. There's uh, clearly... Okay, thank you very much. Well, the Irish can celebrate. They have made rugby history full time in Cape Town. South Africa 20, Ireland 26. And Sexton makes no mistake. Very tall, very reliable. Toner, here comes the Irish drive. Ireland desperate to keep it up. Little spin and change of direction. New Zealand have committed a lot of numbers here. Can Ireland get across the line and grind it? There's a big roll from the crowd. Matthew Reynal is having a long, long look at it. He says it's held up. Thank you. Because it could be tougher if he was on the opposite wing for the right-footed kicker. Sends it on its way. What about that for Johnny Sexton? Hey, for Ireland. Oh, space opens up. Carney within half a meter just couldn't stretch and reach for the line. Is it in? <laughs> Darling, get the try! Murray sees a little bit of space. Colin Murray's away! Brilliant try from Colin Murray! Now I'll go the narrow side. Sexton! Zebo! Try in the corner for Zebo! And Sexton Zebo! Colin Murray celebrates! It's so important that Ireland got the first score in the second half. He's going to take over the kicking duties for this one. The margin is eight. This will make it 11. Nice strike from Connor Murray. <laughs> no hesitation. Why does it? has gone up. Referee wants the ball played. Murray gets it away. Ball thrown wide. Zebo chips Perfect. ahead. Beautiful. Perfect. Little chip. Zebo chases down. Oh, great play in defense. Sevilla. Tight to his own line, tackled in goal, and into touch. Brilliant, brilliant work by Ireland. No position here, they have possession. He slipped picks. A little reverse pass. And oh, oh, try oh, for oh, Ireland! And show is over! A fifth try for Ireland. An unbelievable performance at Soldier Field in the rugby championship. The margin is nine points. Can he make it 11? Carberry sends it on his way. The flags go up. Ireland will beat the All Blacks in senior rugby for the first time ever. There's crossing. It's an Ireland penalty. They'll have to kick it out. The Irish arms are raised in the air. The brave 23 Irish players know they've won it. Gary Ringrose didn't manage to get onto the pitch. 
Sean Cronin, look at his face. Delight on the Irish players, delight on the faces of the Irish crowd. Look at the scrums. Paddy Jackson with his first attempt of the evening. And that is a terrific strike. Jackson, Zebo, little kick in behind for Earls to chase. It bounces up for Keith Earls. It's offloaded. It's Henderson. Ian Henderson. Oh, lovely try from Ireland. Kick is good. Ball picked up and away goes Red Rose. Opportunistic try. Up go the flags. Over it goes from Paddy Jackson. Ryan Robb, it's there though for Connor Murray. There are men out wide. Zebo. Earls! Would you believe it? Back Ireland. Oh, wonderful kick. Wonderful. Is in those faces and in this crowd. Absolutely, Royal. And I mean, the magnitude of the win. Ireland's position in world rugby, the way they've developed their, their squad in depth. Over the course of the 2016 international season, 55 players represented Ireland and 17 new caps were awarded. Starting with CJ Stander in the opening game of the Six Nations against Wales, followed by Josh van der Fleer, Stuart McCloskey and Alton Delan against England at Twickenham, and Finlay Bealham against Italy. On the three test tour of South Africa, there were debuts for Matt Healy, Tiernan O'Halloran, Sean Reedy and Quinn Roo. Joey Carberry earned his first cap in Chicago against New Zealand, while an amazing eight players were capped against Canada in the Aviva Stadium. Nee Adiolokan, Billy Holland, Dan Levy, Luke McGrath, Jack O'Donoghue, Gary Ringrose, John Ryan and James Tracy. Now let's look back at some of Ireland's most memorable tries over the course of 2016. Ireland scored a 39-point victory and another big win looked on the cards. Just before the half-time break, Ireland got over for try number four and what a wondrous score it was. From inside their own 22, Ireland ran the length of the pitch for the try. McFadden passing to Jamie Heaslip, who was there to finish it off. Almost certainly try of the championship so far and a nice way for the home side to round off a dominant half of rugby. A good contest between Trimble and Mbobo. It's kept in for Jared Payne and Payne getting away. Murray. Then Raddock. And Devin Turner is over. First try for Raddock. Gone to Isaiah Mbobo. And so this time the ball. We're just not get checking it. a potential lock on. Backwards by Green in the lead up here. Andrew Trimble. They've got this spot on. That's very clever. Good chase back from Volvo and then the real quick processing of the ball. The little, so Jim, the little quick slide of the ball into the hands of the tall fella, yeah, Tony, and he's yes, stretched Dave. over yep. and scored. Okay. In the New Zealand 22. Murray sees a little bit of space. Colin Murray's away. Brilliant try from Colin Murray into the Irish replacements. What a match. Ireland in great field position here. They have possession. He slip picks. A little reverse pass. And oh, oh, try for Ireland! And Shaw's over! <laughs> the fifth try for Ireland! Healy steps away from the first tackle, goes to ground and sets it up for Connor Murray again. Tyg Furlong, Ulton Delan shoves him forward. Murray again. Jackson. Massive effort from Ireland. In Australia, go to try and rob. It's there though for Connor Murray. There are men out wide. Zebo. Earls. Would you believe it? Back Ireland come. The Ireland Sevens teams got their season underway in Dubai earlier in the month, and we get a chat with Megan Williams about how they got on. Set up possession. They go left here. Numbers wide. Hands will do it. Hands will do it for Ireland Williams. Ball on the outside. Surely he must be in. 
Um, it was good to be back in Dubai, it was a really tough um, pool that we had. Um, starting off with New Zealand, we were all a bit um, anxious, a bit nervous just going into the first tournament. Um, you know, we didn't start off as well as we hoped. Um, we gradually got better throughout the day, um, you know, coming off with a draw against Fiji. 17-0, uh, um, it was unfortunate with Lucy and the kick. Um, and still, you know, bitter about that, but it was good to come away with the draw. Um, leading to the second day, uh, we had USA for our first game. The same pitch, same time, everything the same as last year. Um, so we kind of wanted a bit of revenge because they beat us on that pitch last year. Um, so we smashed it, 28-5, and it was a brilliant performance um, leading into the uh, Challenge Cup final against Spain. Um, we've played Spain before, we were confident that we were going to beat them again um, because they took the chance away from us um, in UCD in, D in Dublin and you know taking the win and scoring my uh, second try of my career <laughs> in, in the series was really a great experience and I'm delighted that we got to take the uh, challenge trophy. And now um, obviously next steps is Sydney so obviously you started building towards that already. Um, yeah, the, we've built, we're building really strongly um, towards Sydney. Um, still quite a while away, so we've got loads of time to prepare. Um, we're really happy with the pool that we drew um, with Australia, um, Brazil, and Fiji again. So we're really confident um, with the with the experience that we've had playing against Australia and Fiji in the past, and we can really give them a run for the money this time. Sevens is a form of the game that can develop and test a player's core skills. We spoke to some of last year's men's squad who have returned to the 15s game and have since made an impact at their province this season. You know, we, we've already had, uh, I think, a high level of success. The boys have come from uh, a non-existent program uh, 18 months, two years ago to now, uh, the, during the year, missing out by two games for qualifying for the Olympics. Um, so that was a crash course in sevens. It shows the talent that we've got in this country uh, and given the proper exposure and playing opportunities, what they can do. Um, from that group, we uh, not only now have we qualified for the top series in Europe and the Grand Prix series in the next summer, but from that group of players, a number of players have obviously come through into the Pro 12 ranks. They've gotten the confidence to be able to show what they can do on the field. Uh, and improve their skills at the same time. So, you know, we saw on the weekend Adam Burns' performances. Um, we've seen Barry Daly uh, and Tom Daly both win contracts with Leinster. We've got Alex Wooten down in Munster now, earning a contract for himself down there. We've got a number of other young players that have come through the program, knocking on the door of Pro 12. And, and that's what it's all about. It's about finding different ways of doing things to develop people so they can be the best that they can be. Back into the hands of Barry Daly. Daly gets uh, up and over that 22 metre line. Scrum half is Gogan. Now Ireland, plenty of possession on the ball and just backing himself is Tom Daly. And Daly. Yeah, definitely. I think Sevens Ireland. played a big part in my progression through Leinster and through the system or whatever. So I've obviously been involved with Sevens for two seasons now. and. I think uh, I hadn't played any international rugby since under 20s and then you're in the academy, you're playing AIL, but I think the Sevens is a real good uh, opportunity to get some quality quality game time and quality rugby under your belt before you move on to the senior squad or into Pro 12 rugby and I think that's definitely helped me make that transition from uh, academy to the senior squad and then eventually into the Pro 12 squad. So uh, I think yeah, I owe a lot of it to Sevens. I think your core skills come on leaps and bounds, your passing, your tackling and even confidence I think as well, like your ability to beat men one-on-one -on -one and stuff and I think there's a couple of us, like myself and Adam Byrne, have been involved with it for two years and I think a lot of the coaches have said to us uh, we've come back different players after a summer of seven. So um, I think myself and himself have both vouched for the sevens and that and it's done a lot for our game. So we re would really be big fans of the sevens game, yeah. The European double headers home and away in quick succession. Leinster looking to finish the away job here with the kick cross field from Byrne. And they score the try that ends the debate and Rory it, I think it improved my game a good bit. You have to be able to throw passes off both hands 15 metres and uh, that's really carried over to this year. I felt my confidence in passing has improved because of it as well as that. 
I feel I'm a bit more comfortable in space now after playing sevens. As obviously there's half the players on the pitch, you need to be able to move in space and manipulate defenders one on one, which also is carried over, I think, in my game this year. So I learned quite a bit. Um, obviously the game's completely different, but certain aspects like core skills, as I said, passing, have uh, really stood to me this year. I felt. And Barry Dealey. He just backed himself daily for the corner. You know, the sevens game is extremely demanding, you know, fitness wise. So like, you know, we needed to be on top of our game on that, you know. Um and then just performing under pressure, like I mean, going over to uh the um the Olympic repechage in in Monaco, that was that was huge. Like I mean we knew we had to win it to to go to the uh to get to the Olympics, you know, which we you know, we knew it was a small chance but uh performing against teams like Samoa and uh, Tonga, you know, they're, they're really massive skill sets on them and um, it was brilliant, you know, just get, test myself against proper opposition, which, you know, you mightn't have got a chance to do, or I mightn't have got a chance to do before with, uh, with the club game. Again, big year for you, you've come in, played Pro 12, uh, you're really starting to kind of, you know, fit into that senior, uh, senior setup. How do you feel it's gone for you this year? Uh, yeah, it's gone great so far, like, I mean, uh, just coming in for the three-week trial at the very start of the season and getting the uh, getting the contract off the back of that, and I just kept the head down, putting in the work, and you know, thankfully it's been paying off the last the last while. And here he is again, and it's Joey Carberry with a flat pass, and it's Barry Daly, a Leinster finish with a little bit of razzmatazz. Skill development is one of the IRFU's key focuses, and we had a chat with the academy coaches to find out how important the core skills are in a young player's development. Yeah, in collaboration with the four academy managers, we looked at uh, the trends in the game and our performances over the last four or five years at various levels, national level and provincial level, 18s, 19s, 20s. And uh, we've established our four cornerstones of skill development. So we're looking at uh, catch, pass and handling. We're looking at the ball carrier, evasion, um, continuity through, through, the, through the contact. We're looking at uh, breakdown effectiveness and efficiency. And we're also looking at a tackle effective and efficiency. And um, yeah, them programs have been rolled out throughout uh, the four provinces at every level. Well, I mean, the big focus for us uh, over the pre-season, and Colm and Gregor taking our session here, it'll be catch pass is, is, is one of the biggest things. We see four cornerstones of, of skill development and catch pass, ball carrying evasion, your tackle tech, and then the, the breakdown continuity area. And we, we break it down into those four skills, and that would be probably 85 to 90% of our skill work during the first six weeks of the pre-season. Now, in the next two weeks, we might start a small bit of game management, but that skill development is the absolute priority for these players because when we get to the next level and having been involved in the Irish 20s this year and the Irish 19s last year, the area which makes the difference is the small stuff done very, very well and that's where we need to be very, very sharp and send players up into academies and into, into professional teams excellent at the basics and then they can use their own natural talent and ability afterwards to shine after that. Look, I think it's huge and, you know, with my other hat on as the Ireland Under-20 coach, um, you know, the, based on the review we've had of the, of, of this, the World Championships in 2016, um, you know, the, the biggest uh, recommendation that we've had from a rugby point of view is skills development. Um, you know, 30% of our turnovers are handling errors. Um, you know, we miss 17% uh, of our tackles. So those stats, they don't lie and, and they're international benchmarks. They're not just benchmarked in a club or a school or in a province. Um, that's against the best in the world. So what that is uh, it's saying to us is that we need to really focus on, on skills under pressure. Um, but with good technique, so all aspects of skill development need to be covered from a from an early stage because uh, without good technique and then without the ability to execute that technique under pressure, uh, we're going to keep coming up short in, in world competition. So, um, but I think we're, we're bridging the gap and I think with that extra focus, uh, we'll certainly get a lot closer when we get to the, the next world championship. Um, it's hugely important that there's a, a significant focus put on the core skills as, as early as possible. I mean, with our programme at the moment, we would have that idea or that philosophy from as strong as back as under 16 and then all the way through to academy level. And then if you like, there's a laser put on it at academy level where we really go after them on the, on the high intense detail, which needs to go into that. And if it's not done appropriately, then you'll soon see that when in the pressures of, of the senior environment and when they move on, 
their core skills and their, their positional skills don't hold up under the stress that then starts to come into the game at that, at that level. So, you know, there's a huge amount put into their, as I said, their positional skills, their core skills to make sure that when it gets to that top end of the game, they're not found deficient in those areas. The BNI Cup and the Ulster Bank League are hugely important for us as they provide the main pathway for our players to play in. A number of our players played in the Ulster Bank League last weekend, uh, some with more success than others and a few of them against each other. It just gives us a chance to look at the players in different environments, to benchmark some of the skills we spoke about earlier, the catch pass, the tackle, the support, the carry, the breakdown and you know, really to assess how they've played in those games, to feed them back information so they can continue, continually improve throughout the season. The Ulster Bank League takes a break until the end of January, so let's take a look at the standings across all five divisions at the halfway stage of the season. In Division 1A, 2015 champions Lansdowne take a four-point lead into the Christmas break, with Cork Khan and Young Munster leading the chasing pack. Bucks also have a four-point advantage at the top of 1B, with UL Bowes their closest challenger for the automatic promotion place. There is just a point between Division 2A leaders Nina Ormond and Banbridge, with Queen's just a further two points adrift. Armagh have a commanding nine-point lead at the halfway stage in Division 2B, with Greystones looking like the only side that could reel them in even at this early stage. It's really tight at the top of Division 2C, with rainy old boys topping the table at the midway point, just a point ahead of Navin and Sligo, and Tullamore just three points off the league leaders. The Ulster Bank League resumes in mid-January across Divisions 2A, B and C and late January for Divisions 1A and B. Tune in in January as we preview the Six Nations Championships for the men, women and under-20s and cover all the latest news from within Irish Rugby. Thanks for watching and have a very happy Christmas from all at Irish Rugby. To keep up with all the goings on in Irish Rugby, make sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram.